I suppose really all I can do to start the meeting is uh, firstly to thank such a wonderful bunch of people for joining it and thank you Carl for uh, for agreeing to, to present it. Now where's Kent? Kent would you'd like to say a couple of words first? All I wanted to say is <clears throat> while Carl may be uh, describing his library which is superlative to say the least People need to understand that this isn't a guy who just collects hawk pictures. Well, Carl Heinz is an absolute top rank first class falconer. He's a hunter. I've hawked with him for the last 10 years or so. And people need to understand that this is not just some other book collector who's done well. This is a competent top drawer falconer who has also done top drawer work in, in the, uh, the library. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Bauke, probably best to mute us all now and um, allow yep. Carl to, to say his thing. Yeah. Thanks very much, Carl. Uh, yeah, okay. So should I begin or? Yes, you can begin. Okay. Hello to everybody. A good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And a very early good morning for my friend Kia and his friend in uh, Japan, for whom already is uh, Monday morning now. So, um, yeah, Tony uh, persuaded me to begin with these meetings, and uh, yeah, here we are. So, welcome to you all to my library here in Schwäbisch Gmünd. This is uh, in the south uh, west of Germany, and the town. Schwäbisch um, Gmünd, I want to explain a little bit because there is something special about it. Schwäbisch Gmünd is the hometown of the Hohenstaufen, and everybody knows uh, Frederick II of Hohenstaufen, who has read our portrait book. And they were, this family was here in the 11th century in a little, little castle. And the name of that family was in that time von Buren. And uh, Later, they moved over to a mountain which called Hohenstaufen. And the names come from that, that uh, a Staufen is a, is a glass of wine. And you put it up, upside down, it's a little bit like a hill. And um, it is a high hill, so the name was Hohenstaufen. And so this family from that time on, they lived in this castle. The name was Hohenstaufen. So uh, what you see here, is my room and my library. Julia shows a little bit what it is. What you can find here is the library about Falkery, and that means any elements or books of Falkery. So, uh, what we as Falconers focusing for first are books about Falkery itself, textbooks about Falkery. And then uh, here are hunting books with parts of falconry. Then uh, agriculture was a, was a, was an important part in the past with hunting and falconry uh, chapters on it. Then uh, very important was uh, falconry medicine and books about falconry history. And then of course the second. Uh, secondary literature with uh, ornithological books showing uh, the birds and especially our, our uh, birds of prey. Then uh, you, you will find you some books about our game, or the game I prefer, and uh, books about dogs and horses. Then what was important in the past, uh, books about lores, and of course all the bibliographies we, we need. So uh, a lot to talk about, and uh, I assume that everybody of you uh, has taken a, a day off uh, for tomorrow because I can talk hours and probably days, ask my family. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's begin. I will start with, uh, for me, the books of all great, the book of all great books. And this is the book of Frederick II. What you see here on the shelf is all the prints which were made of this book. Um, before I come to that, 
I can show you some details. I um, put my first per, uh, books into the shelves uh, sorted by countries and languages. What you see here is all the books uh, and treasures from England. Here, German ones from Holland, some from Holland. These are all the French books continuing there. And the French had the, had the most books about hunting and falconry of all the countries. Um, here are German books. Also in this part, uh, the Japanese books, some from the Netherlands, from, some from Scandinavia. Here are the Italian ones, all the classics. And here are the Spanish ones, another German ones, and so on and so on. On this side, this is the heart of my library with the old books. And uh, so let us start with Frederick II. I'm not sure if you all know, there are two different books about uh, from Frederick II, which are known. Just a moment, I will take a one. This shows the uh, Maximil edition of the Frederick II book, which is in the library of the Vatican in Rome. Most of the people know this, but you have to know this is a copy of Frederick's book done by his son Manfred and added with all his comments. You'll find it here. But this is an incomplete book because it contains only two of the books of the six book editions of Frederick II's original. And that there, there were existing the six book edition was up, um, in the early 19th century before nobody uh, really mentioned it in literature. And uh, it was not uh, uh, known to most of the historians. So uh, the first print was ever made was the book uh, based on the two book edition of Frederick II. And this was the Latin edition done by uh, a man in Augsburg, Marcus Welser was his name. And he got the original, nice binding, and Lico uh, Liborum Frederick II. And this was in Latin and was based on this manuscript I have shown you before. This manuscript was was in uh, that time, 1595, first mentioned in, in uh, Nuremberg in Germany. And it owned to a man was Camerarius. And he was a humanist like uh, Welser in Augsburg. And Welser uh, has translated or not transcribed that book in, in Latin. And um, published it in 1596. Uh, he realized, and he was uh, a clever man, and he realized that this book probably is not complete. So for that, he was thinking that um, this book was not complete. For that, he added uh, the, the 23rd book of um, 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 Albertus Magnus, and he, Albertus Magnus had published a book about animals. Albertus Magnus was, I think, 35 years younger than Frederick II. And he has written a, a book about uh, birds. And uh, when he uh, wrote about uh, animals and birds, and when he wrote uh, the book about birds, there's uh, the 23rd chapter. This is especially about bird of prey and falconry. So uh, Werther was thinking that probably uh, Albertus Magnus had parts of Frederick the second book text in his book. And because, uh, and of course, uh, the, uh, the edition of uh, uh, Manfred was incomplete. So he added for that the Albertus Magnus 23rd book. 
So in this first ever printed edition of Frederick II, we have two books. The two book Frederick of Manfred and, and the um, edition of um, Albertus Magnus. Which is added here. I can show you. I can show you now a special edit here. Which is this here. And this is an edition never bound in printing leaves. I think that should be a unique thing. You see here the book, how it comes out of the press. And you see here the printing leaves with the title page, 16 page on one leaf, which were folded and cut and then bound. For me, Frederick, Frederick, uh, Frederick's book is the most important written book. And it's not, even nowadays, it's, it, it's a modern written book and, and uh, good to read. Um, and uh, the title is uh, The Art of Inandicum Abicus, the art about hunting with, with uh, birds. But the, the title is much longer than that. And what he writes in his is in, in, in a long title is the next, that in this art, you can realize how work, how the nature is working through the birds. And every falconer who feels really what he, do, he does, he realized that he is very, very right in that what he's saying. Later on in, in his prologue in, in that book, he repeats that and uh, says uh, the same. When he describes a falconer, or all the, the quality, qualification of Falconer should have and the character. Then he comes to the, to the sentence, quote, totem proceeded et am ex ex amore, which means all has to come out from love, you know? And this is what, what all dro us drives, you know? We love the birds and we love what we do. And what he describes is that it's a hard job for a Falconer to do all this, you know, to being, uh, with the birds the whole night and day and, and are responsible for them, look after them, take care of them, treat them uh, when they are ill and, and give them the right medicine and so. And uh, I think he was right in that too. Well, I'm not sure if we uh, <laughs> would have get, get the job if, uh, if we were going to be a falcon or Frederick II, you know. What I say always, uh, you have to do it all with love, you know, but, but it's a lot to do. and. Uh, your whole life you have to, to, to spend for me. And for me, sometimes I say, you have to have a little brain defect to do all this. You know, some screw we have probably uh, to lose that we all do <laughs> these efforts to do our falconry. So let's come back to the books of Frederick the second and the print. Probably you might have heard of the, the wild Markgrave, which uh, lived not far from my place here. And he was in the 18th century, where we had the, 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 the main, main time of, of great falconry in Germany. He had a, he had a falconry team with 50 falconers, most from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And he was an extensively a hunter and especially hawker. So in, I think in 25 years, he, uh, he hunted uh, 30,000 heads or so. There's a list about all this and uh, it's, it's good uh, developed. And he gave the order to uh, a priest and, uh, and a decan of a school to translate this book, which I um, showed first from Manfred into German. And this was done by Partius, the name of the, of the translator was Partius. And in 1756, and he learned in a contemporary binding, vellum binding. And in 1756, the first German translation was published of that Frederick II book with the two book edition. 
and of course with the uh, with the adding of the uh, book of uh, Albert the Great. Then another edition, 1788-89 in Latin, with, with a richly good, good comment. All the experts say this is a very, very good uh, edition with the comment in that. Was published 1788-89. Then, then another German translation by Schöpfer. He was uh, a hunter and uh, they had a, a Rittergut, we say. And there was another German translation in 1896. Then Karl Alon Willemsen, he was a, a man who worked, he started in 37 with the project to um, bring new edition of Frederick II's book. And he was the first who published the six book edition of uh, Frederick II, from which only six editions um, are existing. Uh, the sixth one is not very good. And all of them are different. So he put uh, four, four uh, manuscripts and took out all the text and added and in um, 1942 in the war, there was a, a, a two book edition and the first one of the Latin edition of the six books. In, uh, I think it was 42 or 43. Then uh, Wood and Five in, in Canada, they uh, published the English version. Here are the three editions of the English version of it. And then in 64, Willemsen uh, brought the first German translation of the six book edition of Frederick II. And this was mainly uh, orientated of uh, one edition was in Italy and um, in France from the, um, from the National Library. In 70, he brought a, a third volume with all the comments and all the information about all the surroundings of the, of the book of Frederick II. He compared the, the two book edition of Manfred and, um, and the six book edition of Frederick II. Here's uh, another photocopy and here's something special. This is this is never it was never published, but uh, this is a, a three-volume edition of the French manuscript, and this was only made in seven copies with a, with a handwritten introduction, and then it was is from from uh, 1940 around 1940, and uh, then all original photographs. So uh, the photocopy was, but with original photographs and this uh, beautiful binding and handwritten introduction. So something special. Well, why for me, and I can recommend uh, for every beginner and probably for, for a long time for you know, to read that book of Frederick II, because he described like no other after him, all the details, uh, what to do with your birds. And this, this were just focus he mentioned in the book, uh, the Goswalk, but it's, it's uh, probably a not, it's an unfinished book and uh, uh, the, the Goshawk is, mi is missing. So it's just about falcons, but it's uh, pretty similar to train a, a, a Goshawk or a falcon in the beginning to tame and manage, manage uh, and so on and so on. And in all these paragraphs, he describes so detailed what to do with the bird, which weather you have to do what, you know, is it cold, is it warm, um, and uh, how to handle it if you walk through a door, if the bird is in, in, in an early stadium of, of managing, you have to take care of that, uh, where you have to, pur uh, to perch it, and how to perch it, how to put it on a perch, how to hold the leash in that time, everything and then how to train it outside and train it to hunt bigger birds than they normally, normally do in nature. And he describes very, very well how to do it. And then if you go out with them, uh, how to, to um, um, get in the saddle of the horse, how to hold the, hold the falcon and why do you have to 
to hold the fork and on, on the right hand and then change to the left hand. And then uh, that the horse, you have to train uh, when, you, when you come to the, to the quarry where the fork is down, um, that the horse, you have to train that it stands still and that walks around or probably away and you are there. So everything and how to use the dogs. And this is an important part also with me. I like, uh, I like game hawking the most. And for me, the half of the fun is the, the dog work. And uh, I uh, run two English pointers for many, many decades and uh, doing that. And they describe very detailed how you have to train the dogs because for them, it was danger to do this very, very high flight, you know? They wanted to, to kill something and, and probably easy. Uh, with this high flying fork and with this romantic flight, uh, that came later. And uh, that was more a theater than, than a hunting. And uh, he describes how to train the dogs, how the dogs have to hold uh, the quarry because the dogs were first there. And uh, he prefers that the geofalcon, for example, not try to kill a crane or a heron because that was that is a dangerous thing for a fork, you know. So he describes that uh, uh, um, for him, the favorite method is a geofalcon who flies over the game, who is on the ground or sits be beneath the beam and waiting for the dog who grabs it and holds it. And all these details, and for that, no other book is, is so perfect. I, I, I think I have read it 20 times in the meantime. And think about just the use of the hood. He describes on 20 pages in that German translation. He describes where the hood is coming from, from the Arabs, you know, and uh, how to use it, what is the advantage uh, to, to unhood training, and so on and so on, how to put it on. And yeah, well, I could never end to describe that book. Bro, so, uh, but let's continue now. And Carl, uh, I will show you some other books. Carl Heinz, can we ask a question? Yeah. Yeah, Peter Powell here. Can you explain Peter a little Paul, bit? Hi. Yeah, hi. Can you explain a little bit more on how he got to this knowledge level? How is it possible? How, where well, did you get yeah, it? Yeah, that's a good. That's a good question. I forgot it. You know, in comparison to to some modern writers, who are probably four or five years in Fokker and write a book about that. Uh, he describes that he was waiting 30 years and, uh, and uh, collecting all his knowledge. And then he felt able to write that book. And he took Faulkner from, he, he said, from many other countries, from, from Arabia and other countries, all the experts to his court to explain how they do, you know. And he was listening to them in, in, in the book. He said, well, and I took the best what I heard of them. And we did not know, we put together and, and uh, this book was an outcome from minimum 30 years of practical uh, experience of Falkman. Is it okay? Good. Uh, what was an important part in, in writing of books and about hunting? Uh, was agriculture because, well, people who had a, had a farm outside there and the land, they were all hunting and they doing the fork. And there was an Italian author which had a, which had a big, big influence in the, uh, in the um, literature of, uh, of hunting for us and, and uh, fork. And this was Petrus de Crescentis. And uh, around 1300, he, he has written a book. He was a, 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 a natural scientist and a lawyer. And he has written a book about all the things belonging to agriculture, you know, farming, uh, growing plants, shipping, everything. And in his 10th book, he describes hunting and fishing. And to hunting all the time for them belonged falconry. And the first print of it, it was in Latin. The first print of the manuscript was in, I think, in 1471 in Latin. And the first German translation was 1491. And the second German translation was in 1495. And this is this, this book. 
this is uh, a book from uh, 1495, as I said, with uh, wooden boards and uh, it's skin outside with embossed, blind embossed, you see, ornaments and things. Let me open this. This is the title page. This is 1495, let me see. Uh, just showing you uh, the part of bird catching. See here, they catch their birds of prey using an owl to loop them, in, uh, loop them in. And here, these are my oldest wood engravings. You can see here start the part of the uh, falconry and, and uh, they introduced the falcons and the goshawks and how they used and how to train them. And uh, what is nearly in all of these old books mentioned, and this was the most important part, you know, how can we treat our birds when they are ill? And uh, there were no, no vets like, like we have and uh, no medicine like we have. These are the three engraved, uh, wood engraving and uh, one is the same. And uh, yeah, for that, nearly in every old book is a part about the, uh, the medicine and treatment of the birds when they are ill. What was the name, Karl-Heinz, of this author? This, this, is, this is just uh, Christianities. And the title of the book is uh, Titus de Crescentis, zu Deutsch, means in German, with figures. And this means the uh, wood engravings. This is the title of the German, but this is, this is all agriculture and, uh, as I said, the hunting as well. Later, in Germany, there were published uh, there was published a little book in, in uh, four editions, and uh, this starts in 1530 and 1531. And I have this, the, the second and third edition. And this means the German title is Weitwerk. And this is just the tenth book out of this book I have shown you before. And this is would be much cheaper and just for the made uh, for the for, uh, for the year, of course for the hunters and falconers. And uh, this describes uh, how to catch birds and then to catch birds with raptors. And then uh, all the other hunting methods are following and then uh, the fishing. Two little books from 1530 and 1531. So, So then uh, we can continue and uh, probably I can show if we, we, if we still uh, stay in Germany. Here's uh, another beautiful book from uh, 1582. And this is about hunting. And uh, the title is Neu Jag und Weitwerkbuch. You see here, and there's a second book edit in it and this is the under part of hunting which means this is the book of falconry and you see all these nice beautiful wood engravings in very very beautiful and they give a very very good description about falconry but not that detail like frederick the second no other did it but they describe the birds. It's always the same scheme, you know, describing the birds and then how to train them and uh, how to hunt with them and then uh, the medicine. Very, very nice. 18, uh, 1582. 
from that, other cheaper copies were made. And here's a, a book just showing all the um, prints out of, out of that. And this, this was made by a scientist and he brought in addition some other old hunting texts which he published in that book. And this is from also from uh, 1582 and um, shows just the, uh, this text and just the prints out of the book I have shown you before. You can see that. This is hunting and five of them or so are uh, about falconry. And this is a text explaining in uh, Latin and then in Germany, what you can see on this painting. And this is uh, written in, 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 in verse form, like poets. See here, the, the hawking, all the, all the hawking methods, you know, uh, heron hawking, goshawk on the fist, uh, probably a, a goshawk on a hair and so on and so on, the dog they used. And this is from 80, 80 uh, 1582. And uh, the author is uh, Adam Lonitzer. Very, very rare. Here are some younger German ones from the 19th century. And uh, yeah, probably that takes too long. I will start with my, my French books I will show you. <clears throat> well, as I said, French in, in France, they were, were produced the most hunting books and the most books about falcon. And uh, let, us, let us start. Here is uh, a copy of uh, uh, Wormodus. The Wormodus was uh, the second earliest printed book about uh, hunting and falconry in the world. It was first published in uh, 1496 or no, 1496 was the English one. So 1487 or so. Sorry, I do not know exactly. I have to look for. And in uh, 18, 1835, uh, Elisir uh, Blanc uh, published a book about all the, the books of uh, Wamudis and uh, Green Ratio. This is a very, very nice copy with good comments showing uh, all, all the books uh, which were published and the text, the whole text and so on. And uh, what is especially here, this is uh, a copy of uh, William Lascelles in this case. Very, very good binding, beautiful binding, uh, Moroccan leather, green leather, beautiful. We're coming first to the authors of uh, Falkman. These were uh, Franchier, or Maurice, I told you, and then come, came uh, from the printing Franchier. <coughs> Hold on. Turkish. The first, the first, the first edition of Franchier was in 1531. I don't have that. That's very rare. But what I have, I have the second edition, edition, and this is this is Schwartz copy. And uh, this is this is Franchier from uh, 1567. And this is not only Franchier. There are four books in with which every, every uh, book had a different title page. And there was Franchier, Artelouche de Alagona, Tardif, and another author. You can see here, uh, yeah. let me see the title pages. And they, they uh, also sold them separate. This is 1567. This is a, a separate edition of Saint Lair in the in the printer's in the printer's copy. So how it came then to the people. This is from Artelouche de Alaguna. You see, uh, separate title page, and this is a copy was which was sold separately.
another fame, the fame, most famous author from, from the hunting part was Li Fu Yu. And until 18, uh, 1585, Du Fuyu and Franchier published their books separate. And in 1585, and this was, uh, was um, up to a friend of Du Fuyu, the author, that uh, they published it the first time together. So this is the first book where the hunting means the Vernerie of Jacques Du Fuyu and the Fauconry of, uh, of Jean de Franchier were, were put together. And this was in 1585. Very, very nice illustrated. You can see here the, the Fauconry as a second book, which is bound in. And this is the hunting with all the wood engravings. Very, very nice. And this is a very good copy in a very good condition. But especially, um, I had first the separate printed book about Du Fuyu and the separate, separate printed book about Franchier. And later I get aware that there is existing this copy where these books were published together. And then I have read, wrote the, uh, the biographies and then it came out for, to me and could not believe. And it was not really clear in the beginning for me that I had a, a copy of uh, Du Fuyu this is this one, with, with just the title page, the Venerie Jacques de Fouillou from 18, uh, uh, 1585. So I was a little bit confused because I could not find this title page in this two book copy, which was um, published first together. So I thought my, 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 uh, a uh, book I bought was incomplete, but it wasn't. And what turns out now, and I asked all the experts and the experts of Christie's and Sotheby's checked all the bibliographies and also Tia Bo, which who has written uh, the most uh, important bibliography about French books about hunting and folklore, says that these books were always coming together. And here, and this looks like it is uh, an absolute, um, unknown copy of uh, Frederick, uh, of uh, Du Fouillou, of his hunting part. And also the text and uh, the layout is a little bit in variation uh, to the book, which was coming out and bound together with, with Du Fouillou. So unknown copy. Well, here are different editions um, of Franchier, uh, uh, 21, um, no, this is 61, six, uh, 16, 7, uh, some other ones. And here are the copies of Diffouillet, uh, Diffouillou, um, and Franchier, si uh, 1640, 1650. And no, that's wrong. That's wrong. In 16, 1635, sorry, in 1635, um, Dufouillou came out with Hart uh, Armand. And that was the first time the Franchier was not, not in, then the, uh, and then the, uh, uh, Pierre Armand with his Faulkner came in. And this was continued up to the last edition in uh, 1640 and 1650, which are here. And later on, there's edition from uh, also beautiful leather binding. There's edition in of Lavenry uh, and Fauconry. And this is from uh, 1980, um, uh, eight, sorry, 1800 and uh, 64. And here, first time is uh, included the falconry. Let me see. Where is it? Uh, 
first time the, the falconry of Bois-Soudan. And later on, a separate copy was coming out of Bois-Soudan, which was uh, based on a manuscript they found, an early manuscript from the Middle Ages. Um, now we come to uh, the, the other very, very popular author, and, and he did write really a, a good, good book about Falkney. And this is Darkusia. And in the beginning, it was a smaller format than, than the later ones you can see. And this is the very, 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 uh, from, with, with a very, very good provenance from a collector which named Hofer. And this is the second edition. The first edition was uh, in uh, 1598. And this is the, the second edition of 1599. Very, very good condition, you see. With all the engravings, wood engravings. And uh, what is important to have is the, always the five plates are added to it. In this is this is uh, the next early one. This is Schwartz copy. Look, this lemon leather, and this copy, especially this copy, is described by Thiebo in his uh, bibliography, and this is from 1608. Thiebo writes that only two copies are known, but I know that. I know two other people uh, who know that edition as well. And all the uh, wood engravings are into, you see here, also in top, top condition. What is the speciality from the second half of the 19th century? There was an, an, um, a man, his name Victor Bouton, and he was um, a man who uh, made copies of the old manuscript. And what you see here, well, I, I let make boxes from my book binder of, of, of my treasure, <coughs> treasures I can put in. And this is, a, look at this. This is a, a, a binding. This is a, a lay-in. This is, this is not a colored, this is a lay-in work, beautiful leather. And this Victor Bouton has written about a, a part of, of uh, Arcusia. And, and this is the Conference de Fauconnier. This is part of, of, uh, of D'Arcusia title here. And, and he puts in the 1598, but this is the, the date of the original. This is uh, the, the most beautiful book I have seen of, of uh, this Victor Bouton. And what is this special? This is, this is uh, the most vo uh, vol volume book. It has uh, 260 pages, look all handwritten, gold framed, and uh, this, this red writing and, and uh, sentences in the beginning. And what is very special is uh, that here are eight beautiful, really, really beautiful silver pencil drawings in. Look at this. Let's show you some others. Look at this. And these are all made by hand. Uh, by, a, by a painter from that time. And he was a, a, a painter and book illustrator. And they are all signed. And the name of this man was uh, Barik. And you find eight different things. I think this, this was uh, a an, 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 uh, book was ordered by somebody and uh, there is no other copy. This is a unique a copy of this. Look, very, very beautiful. There's another one, and you see that the, this man has a nice feeling for books, you know, and what looks really nice. And this is this is over here, not um, much pages, but this is about 
uh, is coming from, from uh, very famous uh, collections. This was uh, Henri Galis, and uh, this is Jean Saint, and this was a friend of mine who only before me. And this was sold, was sold in 87 in Monaco when uh, the Jean Saint Library was sold. And look at this. This is, this is about the uh, autuserie, which means hunting with the goshawk. And you see, they're also all handwritten on, on uh, vellum. And all the, uh, the little book was uh, vellum too, all vellum. And uh, he put in some really, really nice paintings about a goshawk and some older ones. They are, they are from uh, Dacusia, where you saw the, uh, the wood engravings and he uh, colored them and made uh, these nice, nice uh, illustrations for that book. Beautiful binding, green Moroccan, Moroccan leather and uh, all these gold toolings and so on and so on. It's another copy, Dacusia, 1615, uh, 1643 and the last from uh, 1645. When, when I started Falkery, I uh, was looking for books because I had no practice in practice in Falkery in this area where I live. When I started with 14, I found a Falconer in, in uh, the area where I lived before, but he was a goshawk. And my first um, bird was uh, what the goshawk and we hunted rabbits, only rabbits and probably a, a few pheasants. And then I came to this area after, after I finished studying and uh, there were no rabbits and my favorite birds were always falcons and uh, I wanted to have a falcon I had no money so uh, the uh, the only falcon I could afford was uh, a lana falcon and, and that, was, that was my beginning I tried to to bring the lana into game hawking and uh, I, I was a beginner and had no no really clue how to train a falcon to to wait on very high and then I started and I came to the idea, okay, um, when in the past uh, there were so many, many falconers and, and professional falconers at all the courts, and uh, they, they must have written books. So I was looking for the books about falconry, and so I went to the library and uh, found all books about falconry, and mainly they were from the, uh, from the 19th century and and uh, the most I found, not, not from Germany, and in Germany in that time, nearly, there were nearly, nearly no books uh, written about Falkery, just, just two or three history books about Falkery. So I found the French books from, from all the authors. Uh, you can see here, um, Belvalet, and so on and so on. There were, there were many, many active falconers. Most of them were aristocrats. And at the end, nearly all of them have written books about falconry. And also in England, um, there, was a, there was a lot of publications in that time and a little bit later too. And also uh, they have written in France, they have written copies of the old manuscripts. There are many, many, Tardif and so on and so on and so on. The, this is all uh, what you can find here. And the, the most popular people were, were um, Amade Pichot. He was a falconer and uh, he was a, a, a member of the, uh, of the uh, uh, bibliographers in that time in, in France. And, and he was England, uh, active in England as well. And he has written some books about falconry. And, uh, there, there are some books about uh, of speeches he holds about Falkery and history about Falkery and so on. And this is all here. So uh, from France, probably can come to, to England now. And uh, uh, the first really expensive book I ever bought, this, this, this German translation I, I have bought when I was a student. And that was very expensive for me in that time. A, an expensive book was 30 Deutschmark. And that cost, uh, I bought it in 70 when the comment uh, was, was uh, added. It was, I think, 430 Deutschmark. So 
all the money I had on my on my bank no not a bank account I had at home and that time I had no bank account you know and my mother gave me a little little money in addition so I could I could buy that the next one was the book of Selwyn Broderick and this is this book I will never sell it because this is this was my my first really really expensive book and uh, in that time, it's probably nearly 40 years ago, I went the first time with a friend who was a musician and uh, he told me about that, that uh, uh, book fair in Stuttgart where the antique book dealers uh, selling uh, their books. And I, I saw this book here. And I painted a lot myself, you know, and I saw all this beautiful, uh, hand colored prints and you know and I said my god these men have seen the birds how they are you know that these were the most fantastic pictures for me which I have seen before and I got very very nervous you know and uh, then I went to the dealer and said oh this is a nice book and he showed it to me you know and I was fascinated so oh my god I should have that book and uh, yes um I asked for the price and then I got really, really wet hands, you know, but that was so, so unbelievably expensive to me. And uh, then I walked uh, away and said, yeah, let me think about it. You know, was thinking, no, I cannot buy that. And then I went back and said, my, 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 I did not know if I would see that book again. In that time, I had not so much experience with old books. And uh, that wasn't an old one for me in that time also. And uh, Yes, I, 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 so I, I went back to him and said, can you give me a little discount for the price? No, he said, no, 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 this is my price and that's it. So uh, I get nervous and my hand getting more and more wet, you know, and I phoned my wife and said, there's a book I should buy, I wanted to have that. And she said, yeah, okay, buy that, you know. And then she said, uh, and I said, yeah, well, is, and she's here, asked me, is there a problem? I said, no, um, but the price is a bit high, you know? And she said, how, how much is it? And I said, that time it was two and a half of my monthly wage. And that was all what we had on the bank account that time, you know? And then I heard nothing. Darling, are you still there? And she said, yeah, at the end, if you want it, buy it. And then I bought that book. And that, that was my first really, really, old book and uh, valuable book and what they write and that was in the beginning and and always for me the value of this library is not the value of the book itself the value is for me what is written and what what i what can i take out of information for me as a falconer well, you see here all the classics, you know, and uh, let's, let's start here with the next one. Um, this is Mark Hellman, an early edition about fowling and, and uh, hunting. And with the falconry part, you can see here. This is about falconry and how to catch the birds of prey. Yeah, all the three editions of Seabright, which he uh, dedicated to Downs. Here you see uh, an early edition of uh, the Book of St. Albans. Chris knows it very well. So this is from 1595, you see, Gentlemen's Academy, or the Book of St. Albans. No pictures in, but very, very nice and uh, very, very good condition. And of course, here, very, very nice edition of uh, Fork in the Valley of the Indus from Richard Burton. Very nice book and, and good to read and, and a lot of information about the fork in, in Asia. So here are the books of, of uh, Mitchell, and so on and so on. Here we have 
16, the 1615, uh, 1618 edition of Latham. And this is, this is Schwartz copy. And uh, you see here in many other books, you probably have seen some, uh, the uh, book plate of Torva Lindquist, who was an, an, an Swedish hunter and he who loved falconry and he loved falconry. And uh, he had, had quite a good collection of uh, falconry books. And you see here, this is Lace and Falconry and the second book. I have the, uh, the, the 33 edition as well. Then uh, 1658, it is another edition, and so on and so on. And then here, Cox, a uh, gentleman's recreation, all the four editions who are existing, and uh, perfect book for keeping of spare hawks, which is the early reprint. And here is uh, a Lacem, 1611. I have two copies of, of this, and uh, what you see here is uh, Down's copy. And you see here which uh, the, the, the binding and uh, what looks like a, like a painting is a print obviously. And this is described here in that book where somebody describes, you see here the Down's, that, that Down's described this or invented, that he invented this printing of this, uh, can see on the back of Falconer. And he describes who the Falconers were. And these were uh, Netherlands Falconers. Very, very good copy from, uh, look at this, perfect condition. And Laysim uh, uh, described that he uh, um, um, put in text from all the classics, from Italy, from France, and so on and so on. This is not a uh, an original book from him. What we have here is uh, a copy of uh, Campbell. And this is the first edition, 17, uh, 70, uh, 73. And you see here, it's always from, from Down's library. And you see here, also a print. Here's a, a falconer with the, with the cage. And on the back, nearly the same, but it's not really the same size like the other one. So I'm really not sure if it's if it's really a printing. It looks more like a, like a drawing to me, you know. Very interesting book, and uh, good to read with good tips for Faulkner. And here, this is a the very very rare copy from 1780, and. Uh, the Americans have found out, Peter Devers, that obviously there is only uh, one other copy existing, and this is this is the Dublin edition of uh, the Book of Campbell, also in a very very good condition, leather binding and so on. What is interesting is uh, the early books of of ornithology, and here's one from. Uh, from France, a classic half leather binding, you see. And this is from the also Belon. This is from 1555. And this is about, look, sometimes you can be lucky if, if book owners don't read the books, you know, because of a collector, then you have the, the luck that you can get a book in, the, in that condition. It looks really, really new. And uh, like all the ornithological books, they have uh, always a connection to, to the birds of prey, and then they describe in a way falconry, you know? And you can see here the birds of prey who are described. And some hints of uh, to falconry. You see here that, and this is a, a very, very often repeated uh, drawing where you can see the bird and the partridge and how the falconer uh, picks picks up the bird. Really nice. So these are the German classics, hunting books with falconry parts in it. And uh, here's an Aldrovandi, 
who was a very famous scientist with this book from 1598 with a big big with a big big part about the the birds of prey and uh, look at this this is 1598 the peregrine and he describes Faulkner as well and he's one of the early authors uh, who describes that he has knowledge of the, the, of the book of Frederick II. Really, really nice. Look at this. Also in a very, very good condition. And there was some, somebody else in, in, uh, in Switzerland who wrote also about the, the animals. And, uh, and this is the part of, uh, of the birds. And this was Conrad Gessner about the birds. And as you can see, here's a raptor and you can see bells. And he also describes all the, all the birds of prey. And uh, he writes that the buzzard catches ducks. Well, probably you have seen that. And then uh, he describes all the birds, you know, and uh, gives uh, hints to falconry and describes how to falconry, how to tame the birds and so on and so on. And this is from 1600. Well, there's the famous book from uh, Van Es from Holland. And, uh, and he was... Uh, a colonel from the corps of uh, the ride, riding artillery, and he has written about all the all the horse uh, horses and horse racing and so on and so on. And here's uh, in, there are two editions. One is a two book edition, two volume edition, uh, where in the first one is described the falconry in Europe, and then uh, he made another another edition just of the falconry or the falconry in Europe. Uh, uh, since the, the earliest times and so on. And this describes uh, the Falkner in Europe. And here, all the, the, the engravings from uh, the Traité de Falconry, I will show you, I will show you also, um, are given in, in a, a, a smaller size, you know, very, very rich, illustrated. And this book was only made for internal use. It was never sold. So uh, it was thought that the, uh, the retired colonels and so on, look at this, could read that and uh, they, they uh, after that should give it to some other people from this core uh, of the riding artillery. Very, very good describe. And they describe the, uh, the hunting of uh, head law as well. So how much time do we have? Um, let's come to the Italian ones. Here are the famous book, first and second edition. This is the second edition, always in, in, in mint condition, from Olina. And this is from, uh, uh, it's a book about bird catching. And they describe all the birds they, they caught in that time. You can see that here. And of course, they, they used the birds of prey for, for the bird catching. And uh, he describes falconry as well. This, this, in these times, all belongs uh, together, you know. They, they, when they were catching uh, the birds with, with nets, for example, they used the birds to intimidate uh, the quarry to stay on the ground that they can uh, put the nets over them and uh, Look, all beautiful wood engravings. Yeah, yeah. How to catch them with the traps and so on. And you, you can see how they, uh, they call the, the quail or the partridges and the pointing dog in front of that. In, in Germany, we call it tiras, this net. I don't know if it's in English the same. And all the birds. They trapped them with nets and so. On. 
another famous author was too, and he was a scientist uh, from Paris. And uh, he has written old texts about forgery and published books about that. And um, there are three editions from 15, starting 1582 or so. I start with the second edition. Very nice half leather binding too. This is the second edition of Tuano uh, about his uh, Hiracosophio and De Re Atipitaria in three uh, books. And this is from uh, 1594. And then another short copy, at a different size, same book. This was, uh, no, 1584, and this is uh, the third edition, 1587, same book. From that, um... Italian edition was published with, with, uh, with Latin text and uh, Italian text. And this is a little bit illustrated. This was, uh, the author was Baggio and he published that in uh, 1735. Oops. Very nice illustrated in here, very good problem, good condition. Here's a very, very rare book from 15, from 1519, leather binding. This is uh, a copy from a, from a Spanish uh, collection which was sold in, in London. And this is uh, Belisari Aquavivi. And this was uh, a ruler from South Italy. And he has written in that book about uh, hunting and falconry. Not much, not so many pages, but uh, gives you an overview about what they did with the bird in that time. So this is from 1519. Many books in that time, or some of them, were written in, in verses and poems. And this is a book about uh, hunting and falconry, was uh, from uh, Giovanni Scandianese. And this is from uh, 1554, so let me see. 15, no, 1556. Also in very good condition. And you can see this is all in, in verses and poems written down was some illustrations, but not really fog my illustration. Where are they? Yeah, hard to find, you see, the initials with this engravings. So 1556. There's a book from Lorenzo de Medici about that, and then uh, about you again. And this is, a, this is an interesting about Bonetto Latini. And this is also um, about hunting and the part of falconry. And this is from 1530, let me see, 33 or so. Yeah, 1533. Beautiful, nice binding in contemporary vellum. You can see the second edition of the uh, Aqua Viva I told you before, and this is from uh, 1578 or so. Yeah, 1578, second edition of the Aqua Viva from uh, the first edition of uh, 1519. <laughs> Some other classic authors, uh, Valvasone, writing about hunting and falconry in uh, five books. You can see that here. This is the 
first edition from 1591. And this is also uh, written in, in poems and, and in verses. And you can see here five books and also in the beginning there's an engraving showing about be that this is a hunting and where's the falconry and here's the falconry you see that later there was another another classic author uh, in uh, hunting and falconry and, and this was Raimondi and this is the first edition of Raimondi and, and you can see that he uses the same engravings this is from 1621 and put just a little border on it, you know, on top and down. But these are the same engravings like they used in the Viva Zona, from which I have, this is about bird catching and where's the falconry? And here's the falconry, you see, same engraving like before, just with two borders up and down, on top and down. Also good condition. Three editions of that. Here's another Crescentis in uh, Italian from 1590, and this is a very, very nice Caligaris. This is, this is um, which means, Strociero, this means hunting with the, with the goshawk. And this is from uh, 16, what is it, 1620, so and so. Yeah, forgot something. Probably I'm getting old. And this is just about uh, hunting with the gospel. Beautiful contemporary binding in a beautiful condition. And this is a book about horses. This is Agogomago Rufus. And this is a book about horses. Uh, Rufus was uh, responsible at the court of Frederick II for the horses. I forgot the English name on how you call a man like this, you know. And this is this is just about horses. And you find here the uh, what they put in the mouth. I, I don't know the English word. And and added on this is an an, an book about. Falconry medicine. Look at this. So this is combined about horses and all what, what uh, belongs to horses and their uh, treatment when they're ill and so. And this is just about falconry medicine. And this is, you see, this is in in the in the in the vellum page from a, from a manuscript bound, and this is from 1524. And these are, for the most of you probably known, uh, books from, from Giorgio and Cacano about falconry and dogs. This is the, uh, let me see here. This is the first edition in a beautiful, in a beautiful condition and binding. Vellum, contemporary, from a very, very famous library. Um, Leo Olski, who lived in Rome. And this is the first edition from 1547. Ivo di Rodrigo Giorgi. No, no pictures in. I have uh, four editions from him up to uh, 16. And then come the first edition from Carcano. I think this is this one. No, this is second edition. And this is about, about uh, falconry and box and bird catching. You see here. Also nice vellum binding from uh, from uh, this this famous libraries of uh, Henri Galice and, and Janson. And this is from 1568. This is, this is the first edition of Carcano. 
three libi tell you Shelly Therapina, or Shelly Therapina means, means birds of prey, from Francesco uh, Forzino da Cacano. Uh, the last in this row is from this is from 1568. Uh, and this is the last one from uh, 16, uh, let me see, 1645. And there, there are pictures. Eh? Little small little book, also in a good condition. And so on and so on. Yeah, my, my Spanish ones. This is a, a very nice, uh, this is a Portuguese one, the only printed Portuguese book about uh, um, falconry. And this is from uh, Ferreira, Arte de Caccia de Altanaria. And this is, this is uh, based on uh, Lopez de Ayala, on the, the French, uh, uh, Spanish uh, author, which, which is well known. And this is a beautiful copy, and this is from uh, 1612. Beautiful binding from good, good companions. I know from who it is, but have, have not the name at the moment. There's a, a second, second edition from which was first printed in uh, 1879 by a Spanish author. And also here's a very rare copy from uh, Beist, who was a uh, scientist from Germany. And he was uh, firm in, in that old language. And he thought he's the first who has printed it in 1880, but there was another author in, uh, in uh, 1879, but very rare book about this uh, very, very uh, famous uh, Juan Manuel and uh, the book about hunting and uh, part of Falcon. So what else can I show you? Here's a very, very good copy of, uh, of Richard Blom. Gentleman's recreation with this, uh, with also from, from this provenience Galice and this famous uh, libraries and collections. And, uh, and this is uh, about different theme of architecture and so and so. And uh, it includes a very, very, very uh, famous part of, of uh, hawking and falconry with this, with this beautiful, beautiful plates inside, you know, also in a very, very good condition. And this is about shooting and bird catching. But this is, this is then, then the hunting part comes, you know, but this is just the falcon. And also, and also uh, hunting is mentioned. Uh, there's an uh, there's, uh, English, uh, English uh, reprint, a younger print, reprint from 1929 or so. I must show you this. And coming back to uh, Petrus de Crescentis and his book about agriculture. In, uh, in the 16th century, at the court of uh, Saxonia, they have known about that. And then they, they have written a, a, a manuscript or some manuscripts very similar to to uh, Petrus de Crescentis and orient, uh, orientated to what he has written. And they, they especially the queen of that court, uh, gave instructions like, like uh, Crescentis, how to better manage all the farming and, and, and uh, breeding of, of uh, sheep and deer and, and, and horse and, and uh, everything. And of course, also for them, the hunting belonged to it. And this is, this is an unknown, um, till now it was an unknown copy uh, because there were, there were two, two manuscripts uh, existing from this book, uh, which were known of. And one 
1910, one, one of these manuscripts were in the library of uh, Dresden and one in the library of uh, another town. And two people did analyze the, uh, these manuscripts and has, have written about that there are two books and two editions or two manuscripts, I must say, no, not two editions. And they transcribed the whole text, gave all the explainings, what uh, is, is uh, written down there, you know, and uh, brought this book out about these two manuscripts. And this is the third manuscript, which was unknown. And I found the uh, head of the manuscript department in uh, the library of uh, Dresden. And I said, I have, a, I have a manuscript of that book too. And he said, no, that cannot be. We, we have only two, I know. I said, well, I have a third one. He said, are you sure? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. The dealer who sold it to me did not know what it was. And uh, then uh, I was in, in uh, Dresden and met this man and showed him this manuscript and he was totally excited, you know, because this is, he said to me, this is uh, for sure a dedication, a dedication uh, copy, which was made at the court there. And you see with beautiful watercolors, gold hide showing here, for example, bird catching and hunting deer and, and roe deer. Where is it? Oh, and there are 12 of these beautiful, beautiful. Oh. See here, road, uh, deer hunting, beautiful, beautiful watercolors and water paintings. This is about fishing. Look how beautiful. And where is the plate with the falconry? Yeah, it takes too long. I'm too stupid now to find all this. And this is this is a, a manuscript from 1518. So one of three copies existing. Is Frau Schiemann uns das gezeigt? Another another manuscript and coming back to my to my manuscript. This is this is an, an, an uh, manuscript from early 1500 from Franchier, also from the famous Galis collection. But there's no no pictures in. This is the whole text of Monchier uh, book about falconry. And somebody has written a, uh, a book about all the manuscripts uh, you could find. And, and this book is mentioned there too. And here, this is another treasure. This book I bought in 2016. So this was from a, from a uh, Spanish collection which, which was sold and nobody knew really what it was. Uh, also um, Christie's experts did not know what it was. And so I said, well, I cannot make any mistake when I buy this. And this is a, a manuscript about of falconry. And uh, the title is Libro de Ceteria de Alcones. Uh, the book about falconry with falcons. And there, there's a lot, a lot of uh, details described how to handle the birds and so and so and so. And uh, my friend, uh, Jose Manuel Fatera Zueda, who is a professor in Spain down there and one of the top specialists of the Mediterranean literature about uh, falconry and hunting, uh, saw that book and uh, I made a copy of all the text and then he transcribed it in the meantime into modern Span Spanish 
and uh, he told me that this is an absolutely unknown text. He knows all the texts from 1200 so on, from all the classical authors in that in that um, time and, and in the area of, of Spain, Portugal, and South France. And he said, this text is absolutely unknown and must have been written by a practicing Faulkner because some uh, very often uh, comes from I and so and so, I so and so and so. And uh, so probably we, we uh, can publish it one day and uh, bring it out as a, as a print. Karl Heinz, if I could interrupt. No. <laughs> so half seven, half past six. Yes. So uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Some other. Before I finish, let me show you some other treasures. Here's a is a nice uh, copy of uh, Broderick William Broderick from from 1865 Faulkner's favorites, and and in this book there are only given six plates of the birds they use there. Look here, the peregrine. And so on and so on. Goshawk, Sparrowhawk, beautiful copy. And now we're coming to the, uh, to the most beautiful book ever produced about Faulkner. And this was produced in the time when they had the, the, the hawking at the Lou Hawking Club in Holland. And look at the size. All the, all the members wanted the birds, which are shown in, um, in, in, in life size. So for that the book is uh, so big. I have four copies of that. I saw probably for every of my child, I should collect one, but I'm not sure if they really want them. So uh, this is a beautiful binding by uh, a very, very uh, famous Belgian bookbinder, Saint Blanc Wegesser. You can see here a scenery. Uh, of a heron hawking. On the back, there's a rafter hood. And I think I have seen some of that copies, and I have four, but I think this is the best copy I have ever seen from the condition. You see, there's marble and papers, you know, gold toolings inside. And this is a Schwer copy. This is not mentioned in his catalog, but uh, uh, there are some books coming later, which were not in the catalog and uh, coming from the Schwert collection. And you can see here, the frontispiece and the, and the title page. And you can see the condition of this book is extraordinary. No spotting, nothing. Most of them have a little spotting. And then after the text, coming all the prints here, you can see this this famous hunting scenery outside in the fields with uh, the Prince of Holland and with the, with the famous falconers, Adrian Mollen and so on, and uh, Beckers was one of the falconers. This is the second one. And then this, this beautiful, beautiful prints, hand colored prints. And they were all made by, these were made by another artist. And these were made, and the birds were made by Joseph Wolf, this, this uh, famous, famous animal painter. He was German originally, lived then in London and England, and he was an animal painter, an extraordinary one. And you, this is the most, I think, the most popular picture uh, in falconry. The white deer falcon, uh, the deer falcon, another deer falcon from Norway. Here for on, on, on a town again. Say the falcon. Lana. Peregrine, female, old one. Young Tearsel. Merlins. Goshawk, old one. Young Goshawk. Sparrow book. Well, this is a beauty. That book is an absolute beauty. 
Thank you so much, Carl. I'm not sure Carl can hear me. Yeah, shall we finish or I can show you something else. As I said, I hope you uh, have taken a day, day or planned a day off for tomorrow because I can take our, uh, talk hours about my books. Yeah, we've, we've lost a few people obviously in different parts of the world where they've had to oh, okay. or, or go and feed their animals and so on. Yeah, um, yeah, might I, be. I was ready with people to ask questions when you ran out of words, but um, I don't think there's any panic on that account. Um, I wonder if, um, if I don't know if Bauke can do it, but uh, if anybody's got any questions for Carl, now would be a great time. Yeah. Hello, Tony, it's James Maynard. How are you? Very well, James. Good. What an, ama what an amazing presentation, Carl Heinz. Thank you very much. My question is... Uh, Initially, you mentioned that there were some books specifically on laws relating to falconry. I wonder yeah, if you could yeah. point out which books those are. Well, I can show you some. There are not so many because uh, I didn't afford, But if you if you want, I can send you a list of uh, interesting uh, books about law, uh, uh, hunting laws, and and of course covering. Uh, Falconry as well. I think this, this would take too long if I would take them out. Is it okay for you? Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. That's perfect. <clears throat> okay, James. So what I didn't show is all my books about the the uh, uh, Arabic side and, and uh, from, from uh, Iran and from uh, India and Pakistan. And I did not show one of my uh, my Japanese books. I have prints of the uh, of the famous Eo Takakagami, three editions of that, and I have 45 manuscripts about Japanese falconry. So, uh, but <laughs> I'm not sure if you are tired or not. Yeah, well, I could sit here forever. I uh, I would imagine that there's, there's enough minutes left to, uh, to do another presentation or three. Okay, then I will do that. <laughs> this, is, this is a famous Russian book. I described it in, in, the, in the second book we published, uh, Oliver Grimm and me, uh, about the, uh, the, the forkery and the, the forkery in, in, uh, in pictures. And this is a, a book only made for the, for the members of the court in Russia, uh, which given in order from um, Tsar Alexander III to uh, Kutyapov, who was responsible for the hunting in Russia. And he gave the order to, uh, to uh, publish that book about the hunting of the, the grand princes and the czars in Russia. And what you he see here is the, the French edition. There is a French edition was published in the same time, but only two volumes. And there's a Russian edition in four volumes, from, uh, published from 1896 up to 1911. And look at this, just give it given a short impression what it is, you know. This is this is um, leather binding. See, and, and falcons in, 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 in Russian hunting uh, and falconry was a very, very important part. And I did not know a dealer wanted to buy it from me. And he gave me the, the hint that here at the edges, this is the silver edges with the with the Russian golden uh, Russian eagle sorry not golden eagle, Russian eagle and this was made by Fabergé which was the jeweler of, in the, at the court of uh, of the Russian czars you know and this is this is signed from uh, Fabergé so very 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 uh, luxury made and uh, and this is the first the first volume with a lot of prints uh, showing falconry. This is for, this is uh, just a bird and it starts very uh, slow. Here a falconer. And, and uh, there were, there were uh, the most of the paintings are from a painter with name Zamokish, but they all in all in all, they engaged nine painters to uh, illustrate the, the whole books. And they were from the uh, from the uh, art academy in St. Petersburg. Look how richly, how richly and, and beautiful gold hide it's it's made. This is this is a 
uh, seen from the uh, from the first uh, people who um, went uh, or were, were uh, living in in Russia. So, and these are these are four volumes from the Russian Russian part. This is the third one. And some of these are sold, but none of them had these, these uh, dust uh, covers, you know. Look at this beautiful geofalcons. And in, in Russian falconry, geofalcons uh, were, were much used, you see, inside here, also falconry. So let's come to the uh, Japanese one, and then I will finish. Uh, this is a beautiful. One of the most beautiful Japanese manuscripts I have. Look at this, all original binding. And this starts with uh, a drawing. And then they show all the birds they used in, in that time, or in, in Japanese falconry, mainly the goshawk. This is, this is the bird they used in Japanese falconry the most, you know. Many, many pictures of bird, water, all watercolors. Look at this. Then they show the perches, different perches from different owners. And this is a book um, collecting um, more text from old parts. This is not all from one author. Then you, they show how they they uh, brought the game home and and uh, they did it in a special way. You see, and here at at the end, hawk houses and so on. Other ones. Just a little book, you see. This is bound with paper and uh, fixed with paper. And this is a, just about fortry equipment. Look at this. This is how to make them and described all the other things, bell and uh, this fixing plate. They put the bell on the tail Creances and sticks, uh, a lure, Japanese lure, totally different like the one we use. Some other things and perches and so on. Yeah, well, I could show you a lot. And uh, yeah, and coming, coming to an end. I will show you the, the biggest treasure I had. And this is a German book about hawking with, with goshawks. And this is called the, the, the Beitzbüchlein. The book has no title. And so the, the scientists later who, who uh, analyzed the text and the manuscript who, who uh, are existing of these books, and they call this book Beitzbüchlein, means a book about hawking. This is the, the, the most treasure I have. This is a, a French binding. No, this is an, an, an English binding. And this is, this is first uh, bound and since 1840 from a very, very uh, famous uh, collection, Huth collection. And it was in the collection of Janson and before in the collection of, of uh, Schwert. And in Schwartz's catalog, this book is, he, he uh, said that this is a unique book, a unique book. And this is the, the, the um, frontispiece of it, this wood engraving. And you can see here what they, what they always did in that time. Most of the falcons did not know. They always hooded the hawks. And you can see here the riding falconer, but this is the only picture in that book. And this is the second edition of the of the ever earliest printed book, 
hunting book in in the world means in that time probably Europe you know this, this was first edition is in uh, print was printed in 1480 and from this book existed only one one complete copy in in Berlin and the, and the State Bibli um, Library of Prussia now Germany in Berlin one is I think in London and I don't know where the third one is but but the other two are not really complete and this is the second edition from 1497 and uh, from this book I found out there's there's another copy uh, existing in the State Library of Bavaria so only books are existing and from from that book three editions are known uh, 1480 this uh, 1497 and then 1510 from all of these books only eight copies exist and this is the only one with private hand no other of these copies are in private hand known so in a way <laughs> in this in this private area is a, is a unique book no yeah. so yeah well I, I could talk hours um, but let, let, me just, let, let, let me just show you another one. And I, I, I didn't cover the 19th century, even in Germany, there were some books coming out. And one was from Renz Waller. He was publishing his book about falconry in 1937. And this is the first, the first print of it. And, and the title is Der Wilde Falk ist mein Gesell. And, and Renz Waller was one of the famous falconer of the 20th century and founder of the Deutsche Falkenbund, or one of the founders of Deutsche Falkenbund. And what do, you, what do you see here? This is his proof copy for that book. And, and here you can see how complicated it was in that time to produce a book. This is the, this is the proof copy from uh, 37, 14th July 37, the Wilde Falk is mein Gesell, with all the annotations and all the pictures, um, do you say captions for the for the uh, text under the under the uh, pictures? They are all glued in and all hidden written text to the pictures, and then annotations. And then, uh, if you put something in, it was really really complicated. See here. Look how they changed the text, put it in. Much much complicated. You see it here, uh, the correction of Renz Baller with his signing, and so on and so on. That, that was the first book I have written about Falconry, and uh, he gives some instructions, of course, but Baller was more a storyteller, you know. This is not another real qualified textbook about Falconry, but interesting to read in all the stories and uh, yeah, what he did in Falkery, and th th this was the experience he, he wrote down in 1970, uh, th 37, sorry. Well, thank well, you. Well, if you don't have any questions, I, I will finish now. I can show you much more, and uh, yeah, that's it. Could, could I come in? Yes. Could I come in? Thank you so much for listening. It was an honor for me to, to show you my library. And I wish, you know, that, that's what I want to say for the, for the end. Um, I wish that it could be stay together, but this is a treasure for the whole Falconry world, you know? This is our um, heritage and it should be somewhere, stay in a library or whatever, all together that people who start studying, this is a working library too, you know. I used every, every uh, or many, many books for our publication. I did with uh, Oliver Grimm, you know, and if we had a question or we need some, some pictures for it, I just had to go to my shelf and there's everything. And uh, I could read it and, and give them information we needed for, for our publication and so on and so on. And it would be good if probably one day, uh, 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 international uh, research uh, center would exist and, and, and have this library where, where students can come and study uh, the art of folklore and publishing and, and there's everything they need. They, they, 
don't have to go any library uh, to any library to find uh, any any of their sources uh, they need probably to to uh, write about a theme. <coughs> Could I come in? Yeah, James. James, could I come in? Yes, certainly. Yeah, sure. Sorry, uh, Karin, vielen Dank für die, uh, was Sie uns gezeigt haben. Das war sehr schön. Sorry, uh, just a, a little compliment. I, I have a, a book here from uh, the 14th century. You know, just just for a compliment, because Karin said that uh, for in Portugal there are not so many uh, publications. That's yeah. a book. That's a book from uh, the King Fernando because he was a big falconer, and yeah. he, he had uh, fifty of uh, uh, a team of fifty falconers. And the head of this team, uh, uh, he wrote a book because the king asked him to to write the book. And this uh, book is from the 14th century, mm -hmm. and uh, probably as interesting as information for uh, Karl Heinz. There is this this book. If you are interested. Uh, just for compliment, because I think uh, he gave us uh, books from uh, very old books from falconry, and this is one that's uh, very old. This uh, a part mm -hmm. dedicated uh, for uh, disease of falcons because the King Fernando asked uh, uh, Pedro Menino was the Pedro Menino was uh, was the, the the head of the uh, falcon team of, for, of mm -hmm. the team, and he wrote this book in the 14th century just for. For a comment okay thanks yeah thank you for showing this i i could have shown it first reprint in original and i have uh, the reprint uh, you have made by your club as well from Ermenino. must be somewhere there so thanks thanks for your no, thanks very much for agreeing to uh, to show us some well just an incredible library i i've had numerous messages asking if you'd be interested in doing a second tour of what we haven't already seen. So yeah, if possible, if you like. Maybe that no could problem. Future. But yes, in the meantime, thanks so much for uh, for agreeing and uh, the arm twisting was well worth it. <laughs> OK, it was an honor for me to show you all this, you know. Lovely, thanks. And I you know, sometimes collectors need some people who listen, you know, my family is pretty tired uh, hearing 40 years about my books and what I have bought, you know, and so on and so on. So they like what I do, but uh, they are not, they are no falconers. So, uh, yeah, you need a victim from time to time as a collector to, to show what you have. Well, you understand what I mean? Wonderful job with the camera. <laughs> Thanks very much for that. Um, before, I'll open it up just in case anyone's got a question remaining. Um, the only question I've got is I, be more than happy if you'd adopt me as one of your daughters. <laughs> That's lovely. Yes, I don't know if anybody has any questions. We, as I said, we've lost quite a few people with various um, needs. Tony, may I ask, ask one question? Technical. Uh, Karl Heinz, do you have the? Do you know about the Mateusz Sigański 1584 book about hunting with birds of prey in Polish? No, no, unfortunately not. I think I asked you if you can uh, organize a copy for me, but you said no, obviously not. And no, oh. I don't have it. I know the book. I know the book very well, but I don't have a copy. There are only two originals, so it's not possible. But now yeah. I found the um, in 1979, 1979, they made a facsimile copy. So I, ah. I, I found it so I can send it to you. Yeah, that would just me. Uh, what I what I what I probably uh, forgot. No, I forgot that. You know, I uh, I'm uh, preparing a catalog of my my uh, library, and uh, this is just a first uh, a, a, a first test print. No, really, no pictures in. And this is just half the books I have, which I have put it in. The most the most interesting and the most valuable, of course. And this is uh, about my Bibliotheca Falconaria Kalens Kersman, and this includes books from the 15s up to the. 21st century. I'm now, this is uh, page 220, so uh, book number, let me see, 438. I'm now, uh, which is not printed in here, uh, 550 or so, number 550 and another, and another 40, 50 pages. And I will put in title pages. So this is a book 
when it when it's finished about 600 700 pages or so a lot of work to do i don't like that so much you know this is this is really hard to do putting all the titles in but what i what i do is um to to give information about the value for Faulkner, what is written in, the, in that book, what is interesting for Faulkner, and not just a, just a collection catalog with with uh, with the title and author and and uh, and the pagination and so and what is the binding. Uh, this is this is uh, specially made for Faulkner with the information. What is given and information for the Faulkner. So, yeah, I can show you more and more if you like. It's, it's been incredible. I'm reading messages coming through so fast. Everybody so appreciative of what you've shown us. And Fine. Also messages saying that uh, there's no question that, that they'd thought of in advance that um, you haven't already covered. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so I hope you enjoyed it too. And oh, it's fantastic. The messages are coming too fast now for me to be able to read them. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Fantastic. Fantastic presentation. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you very much. That's lovely. I, I don't know whether uh, there'd normally be a round of applause at a time like this, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we're all feeling the same. Absolutely fantastic. Thanks so much. Tony, just before we wrap it up, can I just have a quick question there? Is that okay? Hello, Mike. Yeah, feel free. Yeah. Hiya. Carl Heinz, that was absolutely incredible. I can't think of another word to describe seeing all that. But um, you touched on a couple of things there that I, that I was particularly interested in. Um, one of them was earlier on you mentioned that there was some historical um, account of um, people... Uh, using birds of prey overhead to scare birds so they could catch them easily. Yeah. Um, that, that was interesting because um, uh, when I was looking into um, any historical records of falconry in Australia, mm -hmm. um, I found out from, um, from an anthropological, um, if that's the right word, um, archaeologist that there were rock carvings and uh, dream time stories mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. indicated yeah, which indicated that the Aboriginal people uh, would swim under um, in the ponds, swim under the water when they mm. were soaring overhead, and then they could grab ducks from 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 underneath the water. Yeah, and that's one of the that's one of the ways that they harvested them. So, although it wasn't falconry, it was um, it was the only thing we could come up with. But, so that was interesting. But another thing that I also um, was particularly interested in there, you you mentioned a lot of people, but you mentioned about Renz Waller. Um, yeah, and I just wanted I just wanted to ask you, have you heard of um, somebody called Hubert Waller, who is a bit maybe a bit more recent than Renz? Uh, Hubert Waller, I'm not sure if he had a brother, but might be. I, I do not recall now, but uh, I can check all my. I have I have a big big treasure of Renz Waller, you know, from from his. Uh, from his collections, and and uh, I have I think thousand five hundred or so original photographs from him, all signed and and uh, mentioned what you can see, and uh, very 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 uh, rich uh, uh, documentation of the German Faulkner history. I, I did not show you, but I can I can show you hundreds and hundreds of photographs, and uh, from his collection, I. Uh, I got this uh, this bronze here, and this is uh, a bronze made by uh, an, 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 uh, a sculpturer, Josef Pallenberg, and he was friend of And this is the most, I think, uh, great bronze I, I have ever seen. See all the proportion, and I say, I think that Valla gave him some instructions. You know, uh, the, the proportions of the of the feet uh, in in uh, in comparison to the body, and it's beautiful. And uh, this was Renz Valla, one of the the, the first falcons of Renz Valla, for example. With, with the name Arek. And I have a lot of documentation about that. 
that bird. Here you can see him as a nestling, you know. This is Arek. And this is the bronze of Arek. And this is Renzwaller releasing Arek in the year, in the following year. And in, in, uh, see, he signed that. Renzwaller, January 1925, released into uh, to waiting on flight. And this is a, a postcard he made for Christmas, where you can see the bronze in his yard. And here's Falke Arek, means Falken Arek, 1924, the bronze from Josef Pallenberg. So, yeah, that's the story about that. And right, about right, that's, that's very interesting. Um, the reason I asked about Hubert Waller is um, I've sort of done quite a lot of studying about any connection, historical connection with falconry in Australia, um, mm -hmm. so that we can establish, we've established a very small archive here. And uh -huh. three names came up. Um, who, they were all German. Um, oh, so yeah. Hubert Waller was one. Um, mm -hmm. The other one, um, I'm not going to say his name because he's still around. Um, and oh, I can't remember the third, but, but Hubert Waller apparently was very active in Australia as a falconer for a certain time of each year. He would come and visit here um, all the way up until um, things changed in 1974. And, and I suspect that he probably kept coming up until quite recently, but apparently he passed away in a, in a traffic accident in Germany a couple of years ago. So the mm -hmm. name's Hubert Waller. I'm almost certain that he, he must be a nephew of, um, of the original but Waller. Be, of, um, but, he, yeah. Yeah, but, but if he uh, did some, uh, as you said, some Falkland activities in Australia, that would, would be very much interesting for us to know. And uh, we always uh, publish stories uh, of this in our yearbook. We call our, our uh, yearly magazine. We publish in Deutsche Falkenau. And if you can give me some information and send me an email, I will I will uh, start some re research about it and can give you some information probably about that. Right, I'll, I'll definitely do that. I'll contact you privately and, and I'll give you some details. Um, of course, more recently, um, these people went very, very quiet and underground, if you want to call it that. Um, mm -hmm. So there's very little record of any of it in the last 25, 30 years, but there must oh, yeah. be something There must be something going back prior to the mid 70s. So anyways, we'll, um, we'll chat about that privately. I'll get in touch yep. with you, I'll send an email. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thanks again, Carl. I don't know if everybody uh, picked up the message to unmute so we could give you a proper round of applause. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Great. And it was, it was really an honor to have you here in my life. Brilliant. That was fun for me. We, thank we, you, Philance. We, okay. we, we get together in person, hopefully all of us. Perfect. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thanks, thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. Bye. 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 Don't Bye. forget everyone to don't forget everyone to request the link to the recording. Thank you, Gary. Oh, I'm Matt. I said, Hi, Matt. I said Hello, Elizabeth. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Bye. 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 But I also want to thank Karl Heinz and uh, and mention. Uh, that we are very proud to have such a member in our DFO, not only as a dedicated <laughs> yeah. oh partner, uh, as Thank a you. friend, Thank you and very much. he always is willing to help us, and especially now when we are working on our 100 year celebration uh, edition uh, for the DFO. So, Karl Heinz is a part of this, and it, and I saw also Kono Sites uh, is. Um, attending the meetings oh, yeah. and uh, we are very happy to have such people in our communities. Thank you very much, Karl Heinz, for sharing. You're welcome. Not for that, Elizabeth. Thank you for watching.
Uh, uh, thank you so much, Carlo Heinz. I'm Kia. Ah, uh, hi, Kia. <laughs> yeah. uh, just, uh, uh, you. Uh, your collection is uh, very great. It, it's uh, just a treasure uh, for Falcon community. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And good morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Carl Heinz. Ellen from Norway. Always uh, enjoyable. Ellen, hi. Good to see you. Okay, I will end the meeting. Thank you, Carl Heinz, and goodbye to everybody. Okay, thanks, Bye. Bye bye.